this is the first 40 sports show with the Goon Squad, Black Thor Ice Water. Yours truly, Puma, going to hot takes. And I just saw this maybe last night. Michigan has been going through, you know, investigation after investigation uh, on spying on other teams. But then when they get caught, they're like, Rutgers, Ohio State, Purdue, they was doing it too. <laughs> wow, man. I want to go to ice first, man. This is another reason why Ohio State should hate the team up north. I'm going to start calling them the team up north because they got caught. They're the rise, but they're like, they got it too. They got it too. Look like D'Angelo Russell in the courtroom pointing at other people. All right, your thoughts, man. Well, you know, when you're in trouble, a lot of people, they, they cry because they don't want to go down by themselves, right? So they cry and you talk about other people because they're like, oh, well, Kobe Bryant, man, he rest in peace. But when he called out Shaq, they're like, Shaq doing it too. Shaq, what the hell that got to do with me? This is true. I wasn't in Colorado with you. But, uh, yeah, some people are like that and some companies or groups are like that. So it is what it is. At the end of the day, it's going to come out like what it's supposed to. So they may not even be penalized this time, this year. But, uh, you know, Things don't work the way they're supposed to. So, you know, karma is one thing I believe, and I said it before, karma is something else. So you you can, uh, you know, you can keep blaming Ohio State. You can keep saying that uh, you're going to beat Ohio State, which you might. But one thing I find ironic about it is you can't win in the playoff. Anyway, but I'm just going to leave that right there. <laughs> I was looking at the reports of the uh, trial uh, with Trump, and they asked him who was responsible for all the stuff. And he said, with one word, everybody. Because if I'm going down, everybody's going down. So Michigan State took a page from Trump. Your thoughts on this, man? Yeah, there's something to be said about man going down with dignity, bro. You do not, you do not, I repeat, you do not bring anybody down with you, man. You get caught, you fall on the sword by yourself. It's just, it's turning out to be a mess for NCAA, man. When the story first came out when they broke this out. You know, you kind of felt the Zoom was in on Michigan. And I'm not saying it's going to take it off Michigan, but it just shows you, man, how college athletics is not what we kind of deemed it to be, what we think it is. We enjoy the games, but there's a lot of shenanigans going on, man. A lot of shenanigans, and it's always popping up. Yeah, and the rumor here in Chicago is if Jim Harbaugh doesn't have that job in Michigan, come on back home, Buttercup. You can come to the Bears because they are looking for a coach. Any hot takes that you have, Ice? Yeah, I, I'm just uh, when I look when you when you look at the NFL, I wanted to talk about that right there. Um, it, it's amazing by by these fans, man. It, I want to say that there's a big difference in fans, bro. Like I told y'all this before, you know, I had so many people tell me, um, you know, new cowboy friends, man. Oh, this is so great, man. This Cowboys and this that they they was right there. I was like, yeah, but when I told you from the beginning, your leader, your leader is everything. You take one or two more steps, you only need that field goal, bro. How the hell you do that? Dive in the end zone. I'm just saying. I mean, I yeah, you're the leader. You're the leader. That's what see, that's what people don't understand. There's a difference between why cats like Roger Staubach, other dudes that won their leadership, they deal with that. Even Tom Brady. You think Tom Brady would have done? You got to make the play. And you got to be cognizant enough to do what you got to do. But then you go back and you can't say, well. We're going to keep doing the best we can. No, that's Tony Romo. We warmed over. Make the damn play, bro. Make the damn play. What do you think about that, Black? Let me say this first, man. We've been on uh, doing this show for I don't know how many years, man. I live for this moment that just happened right now. <laughs> but ice water it comes out. It's unfiltered. Let it go about the Dallas Cowboys. But I, you know, more or less Dak Prescott. I'm going to say this, man. I, I think they played a hell of a game. And for the first time in a long time, I see the Dallas Cowboys play a game they lose to their talent. They did. They really played up to their talent that they have. Because say what you want about Jerry Jones and his son, they put together an awesome squad, bro, every single year. They find a way to do it. And I'm going to pat him on the back for that. I mean, that, you know, awesome game, man. I mean, I've never seen him be that more accurate, better reading the defense. But um, I'm not going to – Blame him for the tight end as much. That play right there. But I always remember John Madison said about the Giants and other teams a long time ago. If you need five yards, don't run a three-yard pass. <laughs> Just simple, man. And that tight end should have been in the end zone, more or less, if he has a touchdown. But that, you got on that running play, you got a little cute, man. Go Just go to the end zone. Forget trying to stick the ball out, all that, bro. 
you got to know that's one thing when you're when you're when you're making the money those decisions got to be become natural instincts for you they just have to bro you can't play like well you know this and that. no they become natural instinct and that's just where you know a lot of times he falls short the natural instinct you know they fall short him. but outside of that man i i think the team itself you know played well i think the, i i I would walk away to feel good about the Dallas Cowboys. I'm not going to lie. I walk away feeling like, you know what? We can take the Eagles, man. We can basically take the Eagles if we do what we have to do. We can take them. I think the Eagles, I know the 8-1, I think they're shaky. But no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give the Cowboys a big up because I think where they showed up in Philly, where they played deserve to be yeah, there's some small minor things that they just got to learn to execute on in the moment. When they do that, they can be there. But I love I love the rant, man. I love the rant, man. I mean, because usually I'm the only one out here rant and raving, man. To see an ice go in it, man. Come on, man. Next time, Mike, you gotta throw something, break something. That's all I say, man. Throw something, break something. <laughs> break a tunnel vision, like some of the Cowboy <laughs> fans. Uh, you're not the only one, man. Pop said I was talking to him there. He said, "Man, they make you so angry. They make you so angry because once you you think they're there because he picked them last week." And they're just not there. I got to give kudos to them. It was a good game. You watched the whole game. They were in it. Uh, they can eliminate penalties and staying in bounds. I think that, you know, they're, they're going to be in the thick of things in that division uh, with Philly. I, I, I do. I do. And I'm not a Dallas Cowboy. Man, I'm a hater of the Dallas Cowboys. But, I, I you know, I, I saw what I saw. And Dallas, I, to me, are not that far away. The defense, um, sometimes they make uh, bonehead decisions and, and coverages. Um, Dak did not have a bad game. He 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 looked good. He did what he needed to do. They just came up a little bit short. But I think they walk away from that game thinking that they could beat the Philadelphia Eagles. I really do. I you got something else to say about this? I mean, that's great. But see, that's the difference between people that are these brand new fans and maybe people that's old as hell like me that've been watching Cowboys for a long time. We have expect we have expectations of how to win. And and if you ever been on a, a, a franchise been fan of a franchise that knows how to win, they get it done. I mean, you say what you want to. A lot of people say you buy Eli Manning and the Giants. But, you know, like you said, the two things that people are going to remember about that they were able to beat the so-called unstoppable Patriots twice, right? And, and and that stuff, when you make plays, no matter what level or whatever they say about you, whatever your rank is, that sticks with you. That's what history remembers. You defeated one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. You put him down. And Giants people will never forget that. So for Giant fans, they might kind of give Eli the business or the Giants in general, but they will never forget those. And those are things that they may play, they believe. You know, that's what Pierce said that, you know, when he was with the Giants, which really got uh, uh, a boy fired, <laughs> got him even mad with the Raiders because he said, when we played the Patriots, everybody knew they was going to beat us, except us. And we knew what we were going to do and we got it done, and we beat them. And, and he came with the attitude and all the Raiders got fired up. Till old boy came over to him and goes, former coach says, don't ever say nothing like that about the Patriots. So he didn't need to be there anyway. He's still, yeah, he's he, still yeah. cheering on the damn Patriots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to go. You ain't even got your mind right on your team. You talking about, you You know, what? that's sacrilegious. Don't you ever say nothing about the Patriots. Paraphrasing. But so, yeah. But, no, I mean, my point real quick was just Dak did play well. He did, I mean, he did more, probably better than he did. But Dak, you know, when you're a leader and you're getting the money, you're doing the commercials, you got everything – you had to make, make them plays, bro. If anything, learn from this, understand it, and move forward. But don't sit up here and keep telling me these damn uh, excuses. Well, they got look, look like, and I'm just saying for me, not for what you said, Boomer. Well, they look like they could have. It looked like they was going to look like they should have. No, till you win. No, you're still the same thing. I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired of the same old stuff. Every year, it's the same stuff. So you want me to get excited and go around here and start talking about how the Cowboys, I think they got it. You ain't got no damn chance till you show it. Show me. Danny White was better. Come on, bro. Let me just Ooh. Google that. Shit. Wow. You Google that. Yeah. Danny White went to the NFC Championship. I we ain't been to the NFC Championship yeah. since Emmitt. Seriously. Give me, give me something. When you reach that pinnacle, that area, then we can talk. Until then, don't do it. And don't ever say anything else about whatever because we need you to do something. I mean, whatever, blame Jerry. But after a while, I always say this, my last point on this, I know I'm doing my rant early, but here's the thing. Say what you want to about Jerry Jones. Say what you want to about the front office. But if you're doing your damn job and they're winning football games, Jerry Jones has nothing to say. 
He's quiet. Out there drinking his uh his uh seven and seven, watching games because you're winning. He's involved because you allow him to be alone with Mr. McCarthy because of the fact that you're not winning the way he you're supposed to. Because he spent all this money and you see what's behind me, all of this, all of this animation, and we can't get to the damn NFC championship. But it's just my quarterback. Will that man get to anyway? <laughs> Black, give me a hot take, man. Woo, man, you gotta give me a second on that one, man, because I was not expecting man, Danny White. Wow, he went back and pulled up Danny White, man. And I was say that's a hardcore. Hardcore conflict. Oh, yeah, I did yeah. one in white profit. I'm going to tell you, man. That's a hardcore. You know, my hot take is going to be this, man. He spoke of the um, the Raiders situation with the, the, the interim head coach soon to be. I'm going to say it right now. It's like everything's pointing direction to being the um, the new head coach of the Los Angeles Raiders. And I saw something today, man, and it, it just hit me, bro. I, you know, a lot of times now we don't kind of pay attention to some of these TVs anymore. If you think about this, man, with the Raiders. They have a black head coach, yeah. a black general manager, and a black president. You took my last second shot. Yeah, I'm sorry, man, but it's like when you when you when you wake up and see that, and you know we live in we live in a world now. Sometimes that doesn't shock us like it should. So you know, I'm sorry if I took your last second shot, man, but that's like what those cat did under his what they did in a matter of a few days on his leadership. I think we should talk about. Uh, I, it's, it's, it's gonna be interesting. You think about with the, with about the uh, the Raiders and what they're doing. Antonio Pierce showed you that. You know, sometimes you just kind of go in there being a a tough guy and showing what you got. And you and you played the game. You know what it's like. Men will follow. But uh, again, uh, the Raiders are perfect. Another example of how another Bill Belichick Patriot disciple fizzled out as a head coach. Great assistants, great coordinators, but they fizzle out all the time from down in Houston and all over the other places. They fizzle out. So maybe you do give somebody else a chance, like uh, you know, Antonio Pierce, who's like, hey, I want to at least have the opportunity to earn the job, right? Nobody's guaranteeing me anything. I'm gonna do my best what I can the rest of the season and go from there instead of putting these retreads over and over and over. And before you know it, it's the same result. You know, say what you want to about Eric Bieniemy. okay? You don't like him. About the uh, former quarterback, uh, Leftwich. I mean, Leftwich can't get a damn job. There's a few dudes out here. And, and I'll leave it at this point on that. Isn't it amazing what the Houston Texans are doing with their new head coach? On both sides of the ball. You say a defensive guy, but he believed in what was going on with uh, C.J. Stroud, and they're playing their asses off because they believe. And that when they believe, the coaches believe, players believe, they have something. I don't know if Houston is going to – how many more games they're going to win, but they are competitive. You got to have guys like that, man. First thing out the box, uh, Coach did was like, look, I'm going to get the what I consider the best offensive player and the best defensive player with these draft picks, and we're going to build around them. They have not looked back since. Yeah, I, you know, I have to apologize because uh, Coach Pierce was was talking tough last week and I just was not buying it. But it's something to say about sports and attitude, getting the right attitude and the mindset to go out there and perform at your best, which Josh McDaniels could not get out of his team. Antonio Pierce, uh, I think the last couple of weeks they, they didn't score and Antonio Pierce was able to generate from that offense 30 points in one week. Uh, I don't know uh, how it's going to go for the rest of the way. I wish him the best of luck. But Raiders, remember the last interim coach you had and you let go. Pay attention. <laughs> Pay attention because you went and got Josh McDaniels and he drove that team down. You That coach had them playing, had them in the playoffs, and they decided to let him go. Pay attention. Black? I'm going to start by saying this, man. A lot of people fed off Tom Brady, man. Bill Belichick. A lot of these assistant coaches that got jobs, let's be honest, but they all got jobs based on Tom Brady. And we see when they go out there, look in Tennessee. Look at Tennessee. What is he doing with that coaching job, man? Not a damn thing. Another, you know, Belichick disciple. So I'm to the point now, I, mean, I don't want to hear about no more of his disciples over finding a way to get all going to race out of the league. That dumbass that was the head coach and general manager of the, the Houston Texans years ago. All of them, man. I'm sorry. Let them go because basically they all fed off Tom Brady. You know, I wouldn't have maybe said that years ago, but to now it's been, it's been proven, it's been true. 
I, I mean, I love the fact that he's even on an intro level, he's getting an opportunity. I think, you know, the owner of this time around, David's son, is going to be smart to realize, like you said, he had an intro coach before he chose to change. And the team was rallying behind him and they made a move and look what happened. So, no, man, stop trying to bring back a retread. I don't even, I don't even call him a retread because he, he fizzled out in Denver. I don't know what you thought you was getting brought him to Las Vegas. I just don't understand it. I mean, yeah, he might was part of a, some championships, but that don't mean he can be a head coach. Sometimes you got to really do your due diligence and do your homework. And this cat right here fits it, man. Pierce just fits it, bro. He needs to be a head coach somewhere. And I'm going to touch base on what Byron, you know, what Byron left, which I, I find amazing, man. This cat is out of the league now, not being offensive coordinated for somebody. And I, it's amazing to me, and I said this before, I know everybody loved Mike Tomlin. Well, look around Mike Tomlin's staff. See if anybody around there look like him. Just look around. I mean, you got this guy in Canada that basically you, you know he's not a good offense coordinator. And Mike Tomlin, for whatever reason, does not want black people or have black people on the staff. And I'm sorry, you can toot your horn about him, Mike Tomlin. I know the Steelers fans travel with that damn towel. Let's be real, especially black Steelers fans. Let's look at the mirror and be honest about this. There ain't no way in the world if Brian left contact you for a job. I don't give a damn. You a job. Ward over there. You find a platform on your, your situation, bro. You find it for him. But yet, you make sure to hide this dumbass quarterback, your backup quarterback, you give him to me and go up. He can't even throw like, an, an, an accurate pass. I'm tired, bro. I'm tired of Mike Tomlin. I don't give a fuck what he's at this point. I'm tired of him. Yeah. Let's go to college football. And um, the playoff status is, um, you know, is set right now. And uh, there's a few games that I want to watch. Last week's games with LSU and Alabama, it was like an Xbox game. And then USC and Washington, uh, USC is pretty much out of the picture at this particular point. But Washington, look out. You got Utah coming. And Florida State, you're sitting at that number four spot. You got a rivalry game coming against Miami. So you got to watch out. You got to tread carefully trying to get into the playoffs. Let's go back to black, man. Your thoughts, I test. And um, what teams are you looking forward to see this weekend? Well, you know, you, you spoke about, you know, Oregon. I'm really, you know, kind of paying attention to him. I think this is a different Oregon team, a different head coach, see if you want about. I think he has brought some kind of physical, mental strength to this team. I think they're going to be able to kind of make some noise. You know, Alabama, I said it before, man, you just, you got to cut Alabama off the neck, man. Don't just, just just kind of break their legs because they find a way. And something says to me, they're going to kind of be hanging around, get close to the mix. I don't know if it's this week with Florida State or not, but I don't think Florida State is that strong. I'm looking at Washington. I love their quarterback. But at some point, if we really be able to make noise, your defense has to show up, bro. Your defense has to come along, and they don't have it. <laughs> they don't have it. USC doesn't have much defense. Look at what I love scoring. I love high scoring. But um, I just don't see it. I'm going to say what I say to you again, uh, Boomer. I know we had a conversation about this last week, but some of these college quarterbacks are going to better right now than NFL quarterbacks. And I'm going to point to a quarterback in the league right now that was not drafted high, Will Levitz. Look at that cat. You tell me right now. If you watched him last week yeah. on Monday Night Football, yeah. boss, come on now. You got to tell me. This yeah. cat. He had me scared. He had, yeah. he had me scared. That's what I'm saying. He's got. He's a rookie. They're coming in now for beer. Imagine he was sitting behind Tannehill for what? For what? Ice, <laughs> right, give me your eye test. And teams, you are looking forward to seeing this upcoming weekend. Yeah, man. I test. Uh, you just talk about some close games with some teams. You look at the way Texas had to struggle to BK State. I mean, you just kind of wonder about that. You keep wanting to put them right where they want to be, but you know they haven't really earned that. Uh, the close game, even with Georgia, right? Nobody is stepping out and really blowing anybody out. Ohio State struggled early with Rutgers. There's a lot of things going on like that too. And but the other things that you really saw were okay. You know, uh, uh, Oklahoma State over Oklahoma. I mean, that was a big win. And I think things are a lot closer than people want to say. Um, say what you want to about Washington, USC, but and Caleb Williams, you know, crying and all that stuff. But still, if they had a little defense, just a little defense, but they got that little defense against Colorado, too, even though they won the game. But uh, it must be difficult for them. But Clemson, Notre Dame, uh, man, hey, I'm going to tell you, Say what you want to, but every once in a while, one or twice, once or twice in the year, Clemson's gonna show up and show you that the way they used to play ball back, you know, a few years ago. And they showed up and, and Notre Dame ran into that bus. So games I want to see, um, no doubt out the box out the box is whether or not Penn State's quarterback gonna show up. Michigan and Penn State. 
because it's a whiteout, it's at noon, it's, everything is set up, and Michigan's playing somebody. So we get a chance to see whether or not they're for real. They might handle the test because if you're asking the Penn State quarterback to win the game, that's not going to really happen. Your defense is going to step up against a very difficult Michigan offense. Um, Utah-Washington, just because, even though Utah doesn't have their, their real um, – Quarterback there to start, and he might redshirt, redshirt the whole year. But as you said, Washington sooner or later, somebody I think gonna catch him. It may not be now, but uh, if they go back to playing the Pac-12 championship, have to face Oregon again, it's gonna be a very difficult challenge for them. Uh, Florida LSU, you know LSU is looking to do what they do. Florida, you never know what is Jekyll and Hyde, but they're capable of winning some games that you never thought of. And last but not least, um, probably. Uh, Rutgers and Iowa, right? Rutgers showed a little bit. Iowa still has something on the line. So those games, long, it's, it's real tight right now because everybody's jostling for position, trying to get to the playoffs or trying to make sure that they're on the New Year's Day ball. So it's, a lot of people will get tight. And you know what happens when it gets tight? Pressure bust pipe. So you either handle the leak or the leak just it explodes on you. So we'll see what happens the rest of the way. Yeah, Buckeyes, don't fall for the trap. It's a trap game. Michigan State, it's a trap game. And uh, Louisville, you're moving up in the ranks, but Virginia popped North Carolina earlier this year and dropped them from the top 10. So uh, Virginia has the ability to come and surprise you on uh, that Louisville team. But the uh, NBA eye test, Ice, uh, what are you seeing in the NBA? And the question I want to ask both of you is, how are you liking this tournament? Because I think they should have this tournament right at the beginning of the season, get it out the way, and then go on with the regular season. Ice? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's great. I mean, you watch as some of the teams are stepping up. Uh, you see teams like Phoenix that are struggling, even though they had the two starters down. But uh, other teams are rising to the occasion and know what they got to do. I told y'all, I warned y'all before, I said one thing that has happened for this team to be really good, and he's going to step up. He's stepping up. You got rid of James Harden. He's trying to show you a little bit more. And the young guys are coming along for the ride. They have a nice roster right now. We'll see what MB is going to do the rest of the way. But I like his attitude. Just like, you know what? No more excuses. And, and he is the focus uh, right now for them. Uh, I love watching Golden State. I had to give Chris Paul a little apology. I didn't think, I thought he was going to be an old man out there. He's looking a lot better than what I thought. But, man, every freaking game I watch Golden State, that damn Steph Curry, man. <laughs> every game. He is becoming more legendary to me. And it's because he goes to the rack. He's expanding his game. We know about the jumpers and everybody losing their mind when he's shooting from half court. But when he drives to the hole and does these other extra things to show you that he's a, you know, all over all around player, he's just getting better and better. You're not, you're not, you're not the best point guard. Yeah, you ain't magic, but I, I, I know you the modern day, you love, you know, you love what you're doing right now. You ain't magic, but. I'm going to give you your props because he's a hell of a player and he's showing me a lot. Um, I love OKC watching them as well. I do too. Uh, I'm, I'm starting to watch them there. They yeah, are. I'm watching yeah. OKC. I like them a lot, the way that they play ball. Um, other teams uh, still like Sacramento. I think Sacramento is doing well out there. Um, the Clippers slide, side show is hilarious, man. I don't, I don't even know how by game 20, Right now they're they dancing and they you know they they singing and dancing together Harden and Westbrook by game twenty I want to see what happens I I just don't get it I don't understand it but uh, you know there's some good basketball being played out there and Denver is still Denver I mean you got to give Denver they love what they're doing I just say this about Denver that bench squad to show me they're ready though we know we know what the Joker gonna do no everybody knows that no you ain't got to we're not worried about the Joker. But I need to see that bench, see what they're going to do the rest of the way. And, and last but not least, I would say that uh, the other team I would like to watch, because I think they're going once they make some trades, is uh, Indiana. I think Indiana from time to time plays some ball. It hurts my heart that the Knicks gave up Topham. It hurts my heart. I, I think I always liked the, his, his game, and they just let him go to Indiana. And you see him just flying all over the place. Black, uh, the uh, in-season tournament, and your eye test on the NBA. The less you can bring that name up, man, the better it will be for me, man. Let me bring the next one. Bro. We already know. We're ready? What up, my brothers? The big setup. That's what it's called every year with the Knicks. I am, um, I mean, looking at the, you know, the season itself, there's some younger players, man. I love it. I mean, that cat in San Antonio, bro. And it's so funny. Um, I heard somebody say this. 
I think it was on the show Speak, said this about a week ago. The, the ironic thing about him, he's not even played his best basketball yet. You think about it. He's not. He's 19. He's not even, he's played his worst basketball. Imagine when he gets it down. I mean, that cat's like a freak of nature, bro. Be that height and do what he does. But the tournament, if I'm not mistaken, I think they do have another one scheduled for towards the end of the season. I think, you know, when I heard about it the you know, all season, I was talking about, I heard the commissioner talk about it last year. I said, what is he talking about? What's he trying to do, bro? I think it's the best thing since sliced bread, man. Since weeks like bread. I'm going to tell you this. It gives you, if it's if it's scheduled for the beginning end of the season, the beginning of the season, it gives you a chance as a fan to basically be exposed to some teams you may not be exposed to. You see other teams playing like, you said, OKC, Indiana, some teams that you may not see a lot on nationalized television that you get a chance to kind of basically fall in love with, see what they can do. And you may want to watch them throughout the rest of the season and to give a chance for teams to find out where you are as a measurement stick, what you need to work on, what you want to improve on. So I think it's great, man. I think it has to start to develop and start to improve over the years. This NBA is on the side. I mean, you think about the playing games they had, you know, at first we didn't care for them too much. And look what happened last year with two playing teams. Basically, one made it and one came very close. So they're tinkering that they're doing, man. They're doing some good stuff. I got to tip my hat to them if I wore one. But I like it, man. I like it a lot. Yeah, uh, I, I enjoy it too because when I found out that each player from the winning team gets five hundred thousand dollars, that's why you see these guys playing hard because the twelfth man up to the number one man want that yeah. money. One more story: NCAA basketball just started. There's some teams that started playing, but uh, Bill Self, he looked like he's escaping. It's like he's escaping. You know, <laughs> the death penalty in sports. Not only that, he gets a raise. <laughs> And a contract extension. What? How is this man escaping all this stuff? I, I don't get it, bro. Man. You, know, ah. you, thought I, you thought I was just, you know, Black thought I was hating on him. I'm just telling the people the truth. Trying to tell y'all the truth. You know, I, I just, but the truth, and he having to pick him, and that's great. But at the same time, I told y'all, you know, Black Thor, we, we remember the legendary ring. It's about the FBI, and when the FBI comes to town, we're going to shake everybody down. Really? It's like, okay, and everybody's going to go to jail. You're going to jail. He's going to jail. She's going to jail. You know, nobody going to no damn jail. They got a scam and they running it. Bill Sullivan is being rewarded for being <laughs> shady. How about that? It's like Pete Rose when talking about you going to the Hall of Fame. Just admit you did something, then we'll consider you, right? And that's what he did. Poor man. Anyway, but the whole point of it is that he's doing what he has to do. He knows the game well. Uh, he's not alone, though, too. I mean, we go back to the Duke days with uh, Zion Williamson and all the other stuff going on, too. And then all of a sudden, the group that came after him didn't have a license to practice. And the, dude, there's a lot of shenanigans going on. The, the NCAA has one thing that they know they do well. They, they had that tournament. Everybody loves it. And they make sure that they cover their tracks well and they protect their people that bring money. Bill Self brings a lot of money. He won last year. How the hell is it? I thought they were going to be have sanctions and whatnot. But all of a sudden, they rank number one. You know you're not going to put the number one team in the country on sanctions, right? Ask Michigan about football. Anyway, ain't no, when you making money like that, well, Bill Self just got another. What else you want, oh, Bill? You want a house in the Polka Dome? You know, it's <laughs> The whole thing is a hit to me. It, and if you can't see it, and maybe I'm old and wild and crazy, and I'll be that. But, man, you cannot see these sets up where these guys leave and they get another job down in Xavier. Anyway, all these things going on. Dude, the NCAA, is they are bending over backwards to get off this very quickly because they do not want these schools to leave them in the dust. So we went from kids not doing nothing to whatever to – now, NIL, coach is getting rewarded for doing shady stuff. Rick Patino allegedly is back in the fold. And dude, it's all, I'm telling you, it's all about the cash. Y'all can't yeah. see that? Cash moves the cash, dollar, dollar bill, y'all. Cash, cash moves everything around me. Anyway, okay. I've been red for the ass. Immortal Bubba Dub. Rick Pitino must be rolling around in his grave right now. All the scandals he was in, and, and this guy gets rewarded, and all this money, Black, what are your thoughts on this, man? All I know is a couple weeks ago, man, you're always saying I should have an asterisk for my winnings and all this stuff. And I should, right? 
I'll say what the FBI, but you know what? Some Chinese gotta follow the money, man. I, when I saw this, I fell out laughing. I'm saying to myself, Kansas said it. The alumni, the boosters, everybody said, you know what? We don't care. You can go on. You can suspend us for a couple of seasons. We don't care. But we know we're going to win championships in the future. That's all they're saying, man. They're setting themselves up for the run in the future, no matter what the NCAA does. And I agree with Ice. You ain't taking the team out in the top five and put them on suspension, bro. Because, you, you know, it's November now, but March is not that far away. And you know the money they make a March Madness, bro. Let's just face it. Let's just keep it real. So, Follow the money, man. This I mean, this can't make a run for president right now. It might get, it might get close. What's I'm concerned, man? Because that's all that is. It's about, you know, you know, he recruits well. He gets them to come there. Look around the NBA. There's some NBA players that, that came from Kansas. They may not amount to much, you know, to the NBA. And that's what it is, man. The money. I mean, the money trail. You think about you think about Kansas in, in general. You got a football team. There's no basketball up there, bro. So this is their college NBA team all wrapped up into one. Bill stuff ain't going nowhere, man. I'm telling you, man. I just, you know, here again, it has me cracking up, man. It has me cracking. I wish the brackets right now. I might take yeah, the ball I bet you do. I bet you do. <laughs> <laughs> all right, last second shot. Ice. Yeah, uh, there's a lot going on. No, but I'm gonna stick right there. All I'm gonna say is I'm not gonna finish this point about the NCAA and March Madness. Ladies and gentlemen, you already know why you said that they're not gonna do anything to take down number one team. They are already probably selling final four packages, right? Mm -hmm. They're selling final four packages. And I told y'all before, you know what they do with the final four packages? They tell you you have this great opportunity to get to final four and watch the games that you never saw before they take all the money that you send in they wait they hold the money they might they earn interest on all the money and then about march they come back right before the tournament and tell those people that made it here you are congratulations those that didn't make it they send your money back but they have already made the interest earn the interest off your money so let them hold for like 90 days if y'all see that call me crazy i just told you about it that's what they're doing with your money you letting them hold your money but then again at the end of the day you getting entertained, baby. You getting entertained. Why you keep going to that strip club? The, hey, hey, da, da, hey, Diamond Luscious. Every every Thursday, Diamond Luscious. You got to see the show, baby. That's all I'm saying. Black. <laughs> I was watching a game um, Sunday with um, Miami and Kansas City, man. And they showed um, the commissioner in the stand. I don't know. I mean, I know we just got to talk about Bill Self. I don't know if there's a happier man in America. Then Roger Goodell, we just got a new contract. He's sitting in Frankfurt, Germany, and just watching everything like, damn, who's better than me? And you're right, Rob. You have some things that come across your desk, and you just found a way to basically be 007 and kind of move them out everywhere, boss. I'm not mad at you, man. This NFL is growing like, like wildfire, bro. People can't get enough of it. So you want to put football on maybe, what, Friday night? I'm ready to watch. What you want to put it on? Man. Do what you got to do, man. We can't get enough. I salute you. Yeah. My last second shot is uh, Carson Wentz just signed with the Los Angeles Rams. You can tell when teams really don't want to win. <laughs> you can just tell by who they sign, who they, they bring in. And people think I'm crazy because I think NFL and football have matches to them. Yeah. Los Angeles Rams, good luck. That's our show. We'll see you next week. <laughs>